Premalignant lesions of the penis have the potential to progress into squamous cell carcinoma, and so the ones that I've listed here, condyloma acuminata, Bowen's disease, erythroplasia of Kera, as well as boinoid papillosis, all of these conditions are associated with the infection with the human papilloma virus. So HPV is an important cause of penile cancer. And just to remind you, the type of cancers that are associated with HPV infection include the cervical cancer, oropharyngeal, anal, as well as penile cancers, which we are going to discuss in this video. So starting with the condyloma acuminata, which is also known as genital warts, this condition is more commonly associated with malignant transformation when there is infection with the HPV subtypes 16, 18, 31, and 33. While on the other hand, there are low risk subtypes of HPV like HPV 6 and 11, which have the low potential for progression into cancer. The next condition that we have is boenoid papillosis, which resembles the carcinoma in situ, but it's actually a benign condition with a very low chance of progression into uh, cancer. So both the genital warts as well as the boenoid papillosis have low chance of progression into squamous cell carcinoma. Now in terms of the characteristics features of boenoid papillosis, as you can see here in this drawing, there are usually a red to violet color and present with slightly elevated papules. The next two conditions are erythroplasia of Kera as well as Boren's disease, which are carcinoma in situ. So carcinoma in situ means that the upper epidermis layer has completely been filled with the dysplastic cells. So entire the entire epidermis is dysplastic cells, but then the dermis has yet not been invaded. So with the erythroplasia of Kera, there is um, involvement of the glands of the penis. And this condition is usually seen in older, uncircumcised men. And then in terms of appearance, these lesions have velvety red marginated appearance. As for the risk of progression into squamous cell carcinoma, there is about 10% or in some cases there has been even higher chances of progression into squamous cell carcinoma. So therefore, erythroplasia of Kera is considered as high risk for progression into squamous cell carcinoma. Bowen's disease is similar condition to erythroplasia of Kera with the exception that the penile shaft is affected. And then in terms of appearance, these lesions appear as dull red plaques with areas of crusting. So here uh, you can see that there are areas of crusting that, on, that are on the top of these lesions. And then there is 5% chance of progression of Bowen's disease into squamous cell carcinoma. So therefore, Bowen's disease is also considered as high risk of developing into squamous cell carcinoma. And so squamous cell carcinoma accounts for 95 percent of all the penile malignancies. And as I just discussed earlier, Bowen's disease and erythroplasia of Kera are pre-malignant lesions that have high potential to progress into squamous cell carcinoma. Now in terms of the clinical features of squamous cell carcinoma, these are usually slow growing lesions that are non-painful but are ulcerated. And then infection with the HPV subtypes 16 and 18 greatly increase the chance of the squamous cell carcinoma development. Now for the diagnosis, you will have to obtain a biopsy of the lesions. Now as for the pathogenesis of the HPV infection, why is it that HPV infection is associated with increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma? So HPV produces two different proteins, E6 and E7. And E6 will bind to the P53, which is a tumor suppressor gene, and cause degradation of P53. As a consequence of which, there would be decreased rate of apoptosis and so therefore now there would be increased rate of the cellular proliferation and thus increased risk of cancer development. E7 is the other protein that will bind to the retinoblastoma and retinoblastoma is another tumor suppressor gene that prevents the development of cancer. So upon binding of E7 to retinoblastoma, now cells that have damaged DNA would be able to progress and continue in, into the cell cycle. As a consequence of which, now there would be accumulation of mutations 
and so therefore there would be increased risk of cancer development so therefore it's the E6 and E7 proteins that will stop the P53 and retinoblastoma tumor suppressor genes as a consequence of which HPV infection will increase the risk of cancers now given that the HPV is associated with different cancers in both males and females like for instance cervical cancer in females um, penile cancers in males, anal cancer as well as nasopharyngeal carcinoma in both sexes. Therefore, it's recommended for both males and females to be vaccinated with the HPV vaccine. And the timing for the vaccine is 11 to 12 years of age. It could be done as early as 9 years of age. And for those patients who have not received it, the um, catch-up vaccination can still be offered until the 26 years of age. And that concludes our discussion of the pre-malignant lesions of the penis.